All right, well, before we get to the good stuff, I got to hit you with a quick plug for my good friends over at Pond5.com who gave me ideas. They gave me funding. They gave us all lots of free stock footage that we can play with. And Pond5.com, that's exactly what they are. They're an amazing stock video and stock sound library online. They've got so much stuff. You got to go check them out. There's a link in the description to this video. It's a link to a collection of 15 clips. You can download them for free. Absolutely nothing. Use them for whatever you want. No obligation. It's great. I've used Pond5 for a long time and I'm super pumped that they're working with me on this short video series, videos one, two, and three. So let's jump out to location and talk about shooting this video. Video. So we're here on location. We're getting ready to shoot everything. The sun is rising, so we're going to have great cinematic lights. Uh, we got like nine different quick shots we got to get uh, and really nail. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. I've got a slider out here. I've got the fluid head. Uh, we're going to end up using a little bit of like a, a rigged up shoulder rig. I know I didn't talk about that on the video last week where we covered all the gear and everything we were going to be using for the actual shoot. Um, but it's just like some P basically PVC pipe. Again, I'm, I'm trying to keep this as much of a budget shoot as possible, travel as light as possible. Half this stuff probably isn't really necessary, but we're using it anyway because obviously if we have it, we're going to use it. It's going to give us better production value. I've got the Surface Pro out here. It's got a uh, storyboard on it so I can really stick to the script while we're shooting and make sure we just go bam, 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 bam from one shot to the next. So let's get started shooting and uh, I'll give some commentary over the video. All right, so here we are, we're out on location, and as you can see, I'm getting the, my slider ready. So we're gonna go and we're gonna set this up, and the, the, the shot is very close to the ground. We were shooting this project at like F2, F2.2, uh, depending on the exact little shot we were getting, and also our shutter speed was 1 60th of a second because we were shooting at 30 frames per second. So the general rule in, in the DSLR filmmaking community is you double up your uh, frame rate, and that's how you find like what and uh, second your shutter speed should be. So 24 frames per second would be a 50th of a second you're going to shoot. Uh, 30 frames per second would be a 60th of a second. So we're shooting at 1 60th of a second, F2 or F2.2, and ISO of usually between like 100, uh, 100 to 400. It's so easy to push and pull a little bit of ISO. You don't want to go too extreme, but it's very easy to push and pull a little bit of ISO. Of course here we're just walking over. I'm just looking around kind of I know this shot is going to be low to the ground. We're just going to have the slider directly on the ground. So I'm just looking, there's that kind of grayish background. You can see the kind of cinder block wall comes down to that older stone foundation. And I think here, if he walks sort of between the camera and that stone wall as he just sort of started doing there, that's sort of perfect. Now what I'm having him do is I'm just having him stand in place so I can lock the focus of the camera in on the side of the pant leg, check light, check you know white balance, everything like that that may, may or may not need to be checked. And I'm locking my focus in on him. That way, when we start recording, he just comes walking through kind of the shooting zone and everything's going to be locked in focus and we can just kind of pan right by it and get a great shot. But I'm just, you know, focusing and, and well, I am actually focusing the camera, but I myself, I'm just looking at that background behind him, that kind of grayish stone that you see there uh, beyond the sidewalk. And here we just can roll right through the shot, all right? So that would be sort of take one and then back the camera up. And you're going to see we're going to go back and forth here a few times just to get a few different looks. Sometimes the sound clip that we might have when we work on the sound engineering on the back end, it's just gonna work better with one set of walking if the speed is slightly different. We can always speed things up a little bit, slow things down a little bit, adjust the sound a little bit, but hey, it takes you know 10 seconds to shoot another shot. So we're just getting a few different scenes here. Um, and we're, you know, this whole time I'm keeping the storyboard obviously in my mind, thinking about, all right, what's the next shot gonna be? Uh, I'm sure I'm here the next shot that we're shooting is, the shot, well, what's going to happen here in this part of the short film in the, in the intro is sound-wise, you're going to hear a car pull up and stop and then a car door open and a car door close. And again, the whole premise of this is the fact that in that briefcase, he has a little piece of technology, this, this secret Photoshop, whatever, uh, that he is trying to keep away from these other people who are after it. So we don't even really have to introduce any other characters or any vehicle or anything like that. We're just running and gunning. It's all just the power of suggestion. So in post-production, we're going to add that sound of the car pulling up. And this is the shot when he's continuing to walk down the road. And then, of course, he hears the car pull up and he turns and sees who it is, realizes it's these guys who are after him and off he takes running. We had to do a couple of different takes here because I didn't quite like the timing. I didn't quite like, it. sometimes he would break into a run a little bit too quickly. Sometimes it was it didn't happen fast enough. See right there, you can kind of see he stumbled a little bit, but you can kind of see he turned, he looked, he had a split second to identify who it was. 
Uh, now here we are moving on to another shot. This was a shot, this is just kind of going to be almost B-roll filler stuff that we're shooting here, where I have him come just running by me. I didn't even really care if these shots were incredibly sharp in focus. This is just stuff that would blur by the screen quickly and just kind of incite the viewer to, to or, or, or cue them into this feeling of commotion and confusion and just that moment when you're for lack of a better term, just like running for your life. So the idea is we're just getting these sweeping fast shots where he would be running by, blown by the camera, and the camera guy's kind of trying to follow him, and it's slightly out of focus, but slightly in focus. You can see, there I go, just jump backward a little bit, he takes off running, and then we do a couple of these takes as well. Now, what we've got going on here is we're setting up for the, the first part of the shot where he would come running up to these little concrete barriers. These concrete barriers, by the way, are sort of the waist height, chest height, whatever object that we found out on location that we could drop the laptop on. So he's going to come running up out of this sort of tunnel of columns and put the laptop or the, put the briefcase, excuse me, up on top of these concrete cattle chutes and open the briefcase up and we're going to get it from just a, a multitude of well a multitude three or four maybe two or three actually different camera angles so he's going to come running up he's going to flip the briefcase up on top of these cattle chutes i'm going to get it you can see i'm moving the camera around to the front side here so i'm going to try to get a shot more head on as he comes around this pillar so he'll come running up throw the uh the briefcase up onto the cattle chute we'll get that shot from this angle a few times i flip around i get it from another angle i get some detail shots as well remember on the storyboard we also wanted to get detail shots of him sort of unzipping or opening that briefcase as well pulling the laptop out and in post-production we can very quickly swap and edit and split and splice all this stuff together to make it almost look like we have you know maybe three or four cameras out on location so you can see here he's running up he's going through entirely through the motions i told him do it and just you know do the entire motion unzip the bag take the laptop out this way again if we decide that right there that's the take that we're using in the finished piece that we end up using we can cut back to that one single camera angle as many times as we want and we're going to have consistency because it was actually shot in one take and then if we were to flip the camera around to the other side you know we would do the same thing have him perform that same uh, action over and over and over again all the way through start to finish so, so you can see he's going he's going a little bit too far back he doesn't quite need to run that far um, but at this point we, we got those shots right you can see the briefcase is on that cattle chute I'm coming back to get the camera you can get a good look at the the Lilliput monitor and all that extra wire that extra wire is just all running to one of those Vagabond minis which is actually powering that monitor it does run off of a, an internal battery but the battery shot and it's it's a cheap monitor you know it's it's great if you just want something and I pulled it out again just because we're we're running and gunning for the shoot we're doing it as budget friendly uh, as we can. We've got just an older 5D Mark II. We just have the single 50 millimeter lens. We had a homemade slider, which isn't even really necessary. And we have here one of the more expensive pieces of gear out, which is that fluid head and Manfrotto tripod. But you can see here, I'm just getting the camera set. I'm getting ready to put it back onto uh, the, the slider because we're gonna get both a shot sliding into him from the front and also a, a shot coming up behind him. And again, we're just shooting the same scene from a few different angles, just so, you know, like I said before, we can just splice this stuff together in post-production. It just, I find with the, my video work, especially if you only have one camera, it just gives you such a convincing, hey, wow, there are a couple cameras here shooting this. Now, there are some things you have to take into consideration, like if a, a brightly colored car or something drives by, you might want to just retake the shot because if you're shooting from one angle and there's not like a big flash of orange light when you quickly cut to the other angle, it, you know, most people, yeah, probably aren't going to notice it, but, you know, you're the filmmaker. You should probably be paying attention to stuff like that. It's just something good to keep uh, keep in the back of your mind. We all make mistakes, you know. I, I, we've all done uh, shots where we, we mess up, you know, a little detail-y type things like that but it's just good to have it in mind uh, so here we're just setting up and you can see I have him stick the laptop back in the case we even have the case kind of set a little cockeyed like he was throwing it up onto the cattle chute so we're trying to pay attention to those little details and here right on cue you can see a bus coming up behind him right and I know I said something to him right after this like oh we got to reshoot that uh, we've have, we had a, that big bus drive by you can see I just took a look at the bus as it as it had passed by so what I have him doing is you know taking op opening up the case I think it's already unzipped but just opening it taking the laptop out and opening uh, the laptop as well now interesting point here the way that I'm working the focus because it's manual focus uh, with this lens and everything I, I set the focus all the way on the front end of the slider so the point that I'm sliding to that point is where everything is tack sharp and in focus so right here where I'm starting with my slider everything's actually a little out of focus 
and as I move into him, then things uh, move nicely into focus. So now I'm just grabbing the laptop. All, I think all I was doing was just going and getting the graphics ready, making sure the screen was set, because we're getting ready to turn the whole rig around and take the shot from the back side. So I would be sliding up from behind him to get the screen of the laptop. Uh, well, I think. So here we go. We're, it looks like we're taking one more take from the front here. Oh, no, I was right. What I'm doing is, as I mentioned, we're just moving everything around, and I believe it was the last frame on our storyboard. What we're doing is we're just we're setting the camera and we're pushing it right in. Just there we go. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you as though as though I was there speaking from the sky on location. We're just going to slide that camera right in behind the computer. Now, uh, I just have these light stands, and in the spirit of being very DIY and very cheap, I just have brackets I think I got from Walmart for like 97 cents a piece and I just have them screwed to the top of the little uh, the little brass pieces that stick out of the top of your uh, of your light stand of your typical you know just get a light stand they stick out of the top of it and we mount the uh, the slider right on top of that it just sits nicely on it it holds it perfectly fine so just gonna set set and lock in the focus once the focus is done as long as the slider doesn't move right you never have to worry about the focus again so we're just rolling through here and I'm gonna I'm gonna push the shot in I'm gonna pull the shot out I'm gonna shoot this particular shot along the uh, the slider here a number of times just so we can sort of ensure that from camera to camera the body language is reasonably the same it's just just for the simple fact that I want to give myself or my editor in this case myself uh, more options when it comes to the post-production so, this brings us to the end of the field production part of this video. I want to thank you guys for hanging out and checking it all out. Our sponsor is Pond5, and this is important because there's additional footage you can download. If you check out right down there in the description of the video, we're going to be using Pond5, in fact, uh, as we begin to assemble this video into a finished project. We're going to be using some stock clips from them. We're going to use some stock music, and we're also probably going to use some stock sound effects as well. And Pond5 is amazing. They reached out and they wanted to work with me on this project, and I was excited because I had already used Pond5. I've been using them actually for years before, um, and, and I absolutely love the service. So it was super cool when they reached out and were like, hey, we want to work together, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. This is amazing and you guys are gonna love it if you go check it out there's the, the, the clips in the description are totally free to check out no obligation just go check it out you're gonna love it it's great stuff um, on top of that we're moving on now to part three now part three of this video series is gonna be all about the post-production side of things so we're gonna bring the clips into the computer we're gonna source all the clips we're gonna make sure we know what's what and what goes where and what we want where and kind of where it belongs with respect to our storyboard and all that crazy stuff we're also gonna talk about color grading and doing the actual timeline editing we're gonna use Premiere Pro but you can really use any video editor you want because the concepts are the same and the concepts are the big thing that's what we want to uh, be focused on I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro just because it's what I use I you know Final Cut Pro is amazing and Windows Movie Maker and iMovie and everything you'll be able to follow this tutorial with any of them uh, we're also going to do some color grading which won't be done in the video editor um, and just a, a bunch of other stuff sound engineering playing with sound effects and just all kinds of cool stuff you're absolutely going to love it if you're getting into video editing you want to get into video editing uh, or you are already a video editor there's probably going to be some interesting little tips and tidbits that you're going to pick up along the way and of course we'll talk about exporting the video and getting it ready for YouTube or Vimeo or whatever you want uh, it's just going to be great so part three is all about the post production you got to stick around because it's coming up next and you are going to love it so, thanks for sticking around. Nathaniel Dodson, Tuckfield.com. I'll catch you guys in the next one.